Hi, I'm Brett. Today we've got a video update on some of the things that you need to be aware of when you're rebuilding your engine and some of the particular points that is important to make attention to the detail of what makes the difference between an engine rebuild and a good engine rebuild. And one of the other reasons I'm doing this video is the owner of this particular engine has asked me to document it so he can show the people that previously rebuilt this engine so they can learn as well. And um, he wants to also use it as a way of other people learning at the same time. So this is an engine, a two litre EJ series engine. We've dismantled it. The client came to us out of frustration because it had really bad oil leaks and it wasn't running properly. Originally it was booked in for a custom tune with an aftermarket ECU. Um, we have found it had heaps of oil leaks. The further we looked in it, the further we found um, lots of little problems. He then instructed us to pull it apart, give him a report and tell him what needs to be fixed. So what I'm gonna show you in the next couple of minutes is what we've found. Now the important thing is this is not about making somebody else look bad. This is about the opportunity of what you can learn on some of the things you may not be aware of, um, which are part of a rebuild. So. To start with, the engine um, is being um, closed decked. You'll see our other videos. Um, it's got the the inserts around the uh, water jacket liners, um, and also it's had a, a head service as well. So you can see there the fresh heads, everything looks nice and new. The important part is, without knowing, the owner has rebuilt or been supplied a original short block out of a B4 twin turbo. Now B4 twin turbo Liberty here in Australia around 01 to 03 obviously had two turbos and it also did not have um, other things that a WRX engine did have. So let's just talk about what was the difference between that engine and the money he's invested in that and what we need to do to work moving forward. First thing is a B4 twin turbo doesn't have the factory sandwich plate with an oil cool. And you see, this is the engine upside down, the sump normally sits here. In between the block and the oil filter on a WRX and an SDI, there is a sandwich plate that sits in there, and I'm trying to find one at the moment, which it looks like that, and normally sits in there, and the oil filter screws on top, and the water from the cooling system runs through this, the oil from the engine runs through, and it's a heat exchanger, and gets rid of heat out of the engine oil. So that's one thing that he did not realize. The other thing he re didn't realize was on a B4, obviously there's two heads, two turbos. Both turbos need an oil supply. One of them has been replaced with an aftermarket um, flexible one, that's fine. But the uh, original one, someone has just crimped it off with a pair of vice grips and that there is what's stopping the oil pressure of the oil coming out of the engine when what should have been done is this fitting here should have been removed and a blanking plug put in place. Now also the uh, water fittings on a B4 engine are different as well. Some of them have been blanked off, but just in particular, if you can get a close up, look at that one there, you can see it's so old, it's actually fatiguing already. And if that splits, you've got high pressure water coming out of the inside of the engine at the back. First thing you know, the engine's gonna overheat. Now also you'll notice everywhere They've used uh, non-genuine sealant, and it's almost like the original owner has um, tried to use as much as he mechanically could. And you can see the amount of sealant that squeezes out on the inside here. And what's then happened is that parts of it have broken off and gone through the engine. So when we pulled the heads off, you can see here, and we've left them as they were, this little bit of red sealant is stuck in the water jacket. This one here is a different piece of coloured sealant. We don't even know, that looks like original factory sealant off something else because it's grey, which indicates that possibly the bottom end of the engine hasn't been mechanically washed before it was put back together. Which then leads us to something else that we're a little bit conscious of, um, is the amount of blow-by oil. And you can see the amount of oil just sitting in the bore here as it's been sitting here. That has leaked out between the cylinder bore and the pistons and the rings. But for an engine that we've been told has only been running for about 50 kilometers, the oil looks like it's out of an engine that's done over 10, 20,000 Ks. So maybe it had fresh oil put in it, which you would hope to think it did, but maybe the inside of this original block was very, very dirty. And over a period of time, the oil has now cleaned the engine with, if you put good oil in it, they've got detergents in them, and this is what can happen. But you'll see everywhere all over the place, in particular in front, we'll talk on before about the sealant. See, just that there is another piece of sealant that goes into the where the water pump is. This is the front of the oil. Now, in around here is the oil pump. Now, if you end up with too much of this sealant in here, what happens is when the oil pump's running, it breaks off and then it goes through the engine in the oil galleries and gets stuck in the uh, cam journals, gets stuck in the tops of the heads, 
And what ultimately it does in the finer ports where oil is really important, particularly around the bottom of the crankshaft and the conrods, is you end up with this silicon jammed in an area which is never originally supposed to be, and it actually stops the oil going through to important components such as big end bearings um, on, and um, conrods and stuff like that. Um, the other thing that we've found is if it's an engine that's only run for a short period of time is incredibly sooty, but we suspect that that is possibly correct because the engine hasn't been tuned yet. And you can see on the inlet ports, it's pretty, pretty clean. Um, but these are all the things we're not familiar with these gaskets. So this is a gasket that we've never used ourselves. Um, it's a very, very thick gasket and that thickness determines the compression ratio to some degree of the relationship between the heads and the block. Now, knowing that we started with a B4 engine, which has got a different compression ratio to a WRX, again, this is a type of thing that needs to be carefully checked. Um, the other thing that I want to show, and I'm gonna make a bit of a mess when we turn this over on the top of the engine, you can see it doesn't look like the block has been mechanically washed from the outside. And you can see, well, unfortunately, all the oil's now sleeking onto the ground. We'll have to clean that up later because we've taken the, the tray out of the way. This is the knock sensor, which is incredible important microphone for the engine if you're running knock control through the uh, factory ECU. And these are the crossover pipe connections for the water jacket. And you can see in here, it's clearly evident that the block externally has not been washed at all because that there is, is evidence of really, really old mechanical oil leaks from when the engine was probably original. Now on here, which is part of the crankcase breather, that was also broken. Um, there's a plastic connection that goes to the intake pipe on that particular thing. But also, I just wanted to show you, I don't know why you wouldn't replace this hose. Look at the condition of this hose here. That's a water pipe and it's rusty and very, very hard to get a good sealant on that. And then you have this nice, fantastic engine that you've invested all this money in for the sake of saving on a small water hose. So there you have it. There's some of the things that you want to show attention to when you're doing a rebuild. Um, if you're doing one thing, I almost forgot, let me just show you this. Now, this is the oil pickup that sits in the sump. But if you look, actually, there's a bit of a lump in there. It's very, very hard to see. But if I scrape some of that oil out of the bottom, it's actually in the light here. You can see it's actually glistening, which indicates that it's actually got, and you see, look at that. That's metal. There's junk in there that's come out of the engine, but fine particles of metal indicates possible worn bearings already on its brand new conrods. But again, these are the things that sometimes can have a big effect on the reliability of the engine moving forward. But also you'll notice there's another bit of silicon on top of that. This is the windage tray that sits up under the engine, but you'll notice, where was it? There, look, there, it's been, it's cracked. Now that there is actually a crack where something has mechanically hit it because it's got a dent in it and then it's propagated into a crack and somebody's put it back together and left it in the car. So I suspect whether that was on the original donor engine, it may have been in an accident or the sump may have been damaged, but why you wouldn't fix that or just tidy that up before it put back together, it starts making us worry about the original condition of the engine. So hopefully this video has helped you learn more about the car. Hopefully this video has helped the owner understand about what we've found. And hopefully this video, no matter where you are in the world, will give you a bit of an idea of an engine rebuild is a detailed mechanical component. It is important to take your time and make sure you do it properly. And these are the small things that you need to be aware of. But of course, my name is Brett Middleton. If we can help you in the future, you can contact us through Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. We do do engine rebuilds and we do do tuning all in our own workshop here in Sydney, Australia. Love to help you for next time. Stay tuned. Bye for now.